Hey everybody, this is Tim Wolf, and today we're going to be talking about folklore, the Long Pond Sessions, and a reaction to that. I finally broke down, paid for Disney Plus, and was able to watch it a couple days ago. And I'm really looking forward to sharing my reactions. Also, some behind-the-scenes things that you may not be aware of, uh, using some different sources of information regarding what went into it, that sort of thing. So, hi, I'm Tim Wolf. I'm a Nashville-based singer-songwriter artist, and you can listen to my music. There's a link down below in the comment section. You can There's a bit.ly link where you can go to my Spotify. There's also a link where you can get 10 of my singles free, and there's a download link there. And It means a lot to an artist when you do that. So if you'd be willing to do that, I'd appreciate it very much. And don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, Long Pond Sessions, it's been out since November 25th of 2020, and so it's been a couple months. I had some requests from some of the people on my channel to review this, and I'm a little late on getting that done, my apologies. But I did finally, like I said, go through the hoops of subscribing to Disney Plus and getting it on my television. Taylor Swift released Folklore, she recorded it, wrote it, and recorded it during the pandemic, and then she just kept going and released another album, Evermore. She's been very busy. Well, she hasn't been able to tour. Everything's been shut down. And so she also released two documentary films. She's released her, before that, she'd only, so she doubled her total output of documentary films. She, she released Americana, and then the Long Pond Sessions. And the Long Pond Sessions, if you watched it, uh, you probably know, it's just an intimate concert slash documentary of performing all 17 songs on, on the album, including the bonus one that was released later. And then those songs, those stripped down songs, were then released and are available for streaming and I think also purchase. It's, it's just a completely different look of the album, Folklore. So how did this all start and what is Long Pond? Well, Long Pond is a studio in upstate New York about a mile from the Hudson River that is owned by Aaron Desner. Now, Aaron Desner and his brother Bryce are two-fifths of the band The National. A little bit about uh, Aaron Desner. He's in his mid-40s, and he's been working with The National uh, and his twin brother Bryce for 20 years at least. And he started working with recording when he was a teenager. He says he's been doing it for 30 years, so he, he had to start when he was like 14. And his natural ability in the band is to be behind the console and run the Pro Tools, and that's how he collaborates with people. He started getting more into that and built a studio in Brooklyn. And then in 2016, he he moved up to the Hudson, Hudson uh, River Valley area. Anyway, so backing up to how he met the players that were on the album... In 2009, he was working on an AIDS benefit project called Dark is the Night. He had met Justin Vernon through MySpace in 2008. Justin Vernon is Bonnevere, the frontman for Bonnevere, really the brainchild for it. And he also appeared on Folklore. He asked Justin if he'd be interested in working on this charity project. Dark was the Night, which is a 32-track compilation album with a lot of people for uh, AIDS project, it was a 2009 project, and he asked uh, Justin Vernon, if he'd be interested in working on it. He sent them a rough piano demo that he said he had. It was very rough, and he had a piano across, or the mic was across the room, and he sent it to, to Justin, and Justin sent back a completely completed song, and that was the beginning of their friendship and collaboration, and now he's uh, he says he's very close friends with Justin. They've had a lot of projects together. We've got a band called Red, a Big Red Machine, and they've also got a record label together, the record label is called People because there's a lot of it's all about the community. There's a lot of people involved in it, but People magazine would not allow them to use the word people, so they spelled it with numbers. It's upside down. So the label is 37D03D, which if you turn it upside down, it would say people. So that's their inside joke. And that's the label that they have, and they're putting out a lot of different music, and it's all about the community. And so Aaron, he built a studio in Brooklyn, which is where he was living. And in 2016, he and his family moved up to upstate New York, bought this property. It's a 18th century farmhouse and had a barn on it. And he renovated the property in 2016 and turned it into a recording studio. And there's a, there's a long pond right next to it. 
and it's kind of a narrow and long and so they called it the long pond studios and it, he doesn't really run it as a commercial studio he says the only people that he records there are his friends and collaborators and one of the first people that he worked with not at this studio because it pre predated the studio was sharon van atten and he's been he's worked with a lot of other people he's done the charity project that i said that i told about dark was the night and so he built this and it's become a uh, there's a lot of people that he's worked with and he's become a really well-known producer and songwriter the long pond studio it was built in a barn that's 28 feet high you can see it in the in the documentary they they got a drone that was able to take overhead shots of it. It's very picturesque, very beautiful. The He rebuilt it to be very cozy. It doesn't have a control room. A lot of commercial studios have a glass and behind the glass is where the mixing engineer sits and, and then talks to the band in the recording area. And Aaron said he didn't like that set up. He thought it was too isolating. So he put everything into one room. And you can see that in documentary that it's just one big room. And they reclaimed a lot of the wood from the barn. And on the second story of the barn, there are three bedrooms. And also on the first floor, there's the studio and a li big living area and also a bathroom and also another bed. So they can, they can sleep a lot of people. And then also in their house, there are some extra bedrooms. So he can, he said he can house a big group that, come, that can come over. So that's what happened in September of 2020. Taylor Swift and Jack Antonoff uh, met up at the studio. And that's the first time they've been in the same room together because Folklore was recorded uh, remotely due to the pandemic. And Taylor had set up a studio in her bedroom in L.A., and there's in the documentary, you can see some of the, the videos that she did, home videos, with her cats fighting on the bed behind her. She's trying to take some, do some vocals and things like that. And when they recorded, Aaron, who acted as producer, he said he could actually, using a secure line and high-speed internet, he could actually, across the country, because he's in New York and she's in L.A., upstate New York, and he was able to be in her in her in her headphones as she was singing and hearing it in real time that's that's the wonders of technology in 2021 with high speed internet and so that's how they were record, able to re record the vocals probably a well worn story by now taylor had all of her gigs canceled in april of 2020 and she was like what am i going to do and she she reached out to aaron desner and they'd known each other for some time aaron desner and taylor swift met uh, in 2014 at Saturday Night Live television show and and they became friends and mutual a admiration of each other and so but they never worked together but apparently Taylor says in the documentary that she had always wanted to work with him and so she took the opportunity and in April she uh, sent him a text and he I, I've heard him he said it in the interview that I have on Tape Op, and he also said it in the documentary. He said when he got the text, he looks at his phone and he says, is this really Taylor Swift? Because when the biggest artist in the world reaches out to you, probably uh, wondering if it's one of your friends playing a trick on you, but it was Taylor. And so they, they decided to work together, and she said, send me anything you got, no matter how weird it is. And he sent a folder of things, according to what he says in the tape op interview, that within a couple hours, she sends back, she had picked the, the track for Cardigan, and she sends back completed lyrics, completed song, uh, fully produced to the track. It was top lining, basically. He sent the music and she had sung over the top. He had all of these instrumentals that he had written, and he thought maybe they were for another project, uh, Big Red Machine, which is a project that he has with uh, Justin Vernon, and uh, or maybe from with The National. He says he writes a lot of stuff as therapy. He wasn't even sure what the use was, but he had a lot of snippets of music that he was able to send her. And uh, she put those to good use. And he said, he, first came Cardigan, and then the next day was another song, the next day another song. And so Taylor showed her, her incredible production, uh, productivity, of uh, writing songs to the music that Aaron had sent. And that's how that went. And then, as I said, they recorded the vocals remotely. And uh, she also worked with her longtime collaborator and producer, Jack Antonoff, who she's worked with since 2013. He co-wrote some of the songs, co-wrote and produced on the album. It was the first time all three of them had been together when they did 
the folklore long pond sessions. So Taylor went to Aaron Desner's property. They, they got together and, and Jack came as well. And they had a, actually had a producer behind the, the console. And I, I didn't find any credits for that, but I think I'm gonna guess it was probably, probably Jonathan Lowe, who's a long-term collaborator with Aaron and who also mixed a lot of folklore. So he, there was someone behind the console monitoring all of the feeds as they were recording it in uh, for the long pond sessions. So that's how the songwriting went. And then they decided to get together in September. As I said, they all showed up at long pond. And they also, during that time period, while they were recording the long pond sessions of folklore, they also wrote and recorded the album Evermore. So that was done at the same time at Long Pond Sessions. So it was a very product, productive time. And as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, well, where is the cameraman? How come I don't see the cameraman reflected in the night glass? Because a lot of it was recorded when it was night and you could see the reflection back. And the reason was there weren't any camera operators. They had six cameras scattered throughout the studio and they had a seventh camera that was on a 30 foot rails that was able to, to move and do a moving camera shot. And then of course they used the drone for the outdoor shots, day, daylight shots. And so it, very well done. That way it would make everyone very, uh, very natural because you wouldn't be self-conscious about having a, a, a film camera operator there and uh, make an artificial environment. Oh, I'm on camera. And you probably forget about the fact that there is a camera, a stationary camera there that is kind of embedded and falls into the scenery. Very well done. The documentary has a rating of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty amazing. And a lot of critics really, really loved it and thought it was a phenomenal uh, companion to the album. And I think, as I said, the, the tracks were released, the live tracks, the stripped down, most of the instrumentation, well, it was only Jack and Aaron, and Taylor played guitar on some of the tracks, but most of the tracks, it appeared to me, she just sang and did, did a wonderful job. And it was just really shows how great the songwriting is to me because you didn't need the production to, to hold up the songs. These are stripped down and it really shows how great the songs are. So it is a quote from Tape Op Magazine, which was an interview that, that uh, Aaron Desner did. What's the date on this? February, March, 2021. So it's not that old. And this is what he had to say about collaborating with Taylor. When they first started working together, she said, send anything, the weirdest thing you think I'd be interested in hearing. Aaron speaking, my phone lit up a couple hours later and she had sent back the song Cardigan, completely finished as a voice memo to the music I'd written. It was almost fully produced. It was very similar to what it ultimately came. It was so quick, it felt like a lightning bolt hit the house at that moment. The next day she sent another, and the next day another one. It kept on like that. Then I started to write more and we clicked. I don't think either of us expected that, but that's what happened. With Taylor, he said, I can't believe how talented and focused she is and how her musical mind is extremely expansive, what she's capable of. People know her various phases and different records, but until you work with someone directly, you don't know what their skills are and what their genius is. Hers is expansive. That's been amazing to click with someone like that and go toe to toe. She's very capable, sharp, and an interesting person. The fun thing about being collaborative, I get to learn from people all the time. And I mean, I just loved the window into the production. And as a, as a producer myself, I have my own studio, uh, I was paying a lot of attention to even the mics they used and the instrumentation and, and the layout of the studio, the sound uh, proofing that they did, that those things were all interesting to me. Just fascinating. I think I can see why they're so produ productive in that studio, a beautiful studio. I feel fortunate to be able to have that window into the, uh, the performance and the, the making of the album. 11 things we we'll learn from the documentary. Number one, she clearly said that William Bowery, who's credited on two songs, Betty and Exile, is her longtime boyfriend, Joel. I think that was not a very well-kept secret. I think everyone knew that. Also, she said that she believed 
that James and Betty ended up together after many years. And she thought that Cardigan was a look back uh, to middle age, when they were middle age, and look back at like 20, 30 years later at what it was like their teen years. And she said ba uh, James was, a, was acted badly because he broke up with her for the summer and went with a woman who was not Inez, but was, uh, Taylor thought her name was Augustine or uh, uh, something related to August, August, which was the name of the song where she was, her, her song. Uh, it was in the trilogy. There was Betty, Cardigan, and then August. So the interesting point that was made while they were sitting around the, around the fire at night drinking wine was that uh, of those three songs, Cardigan was written by Aaron and Taylor, August was written by Jack and Taylor, and then all three of them, plus her boyfriend Joe, credited as William Bowery, were credited on Betty. She paired up with one of them, and then the other one, and then all together for Betty. Taylor also confirmed that the entire album was not autobiographical, and this was the first album that she felt comfortable not making it about herself. She had the idea that all her songs that she wrote had to be about herself, and she felt comfortable making up complete fantasy uh, scenarios. And I think that's part of the maturation she's seeing as, as an artist. I mean, when you don't have to write from your own life, you the, the amount of possible stories that you can tell become unlimited. It's like a novelist. And, uh, and I'm, I'm excited for you know what she's gonna produce. Unless she decides to chuck it all in and go and become a hermit somewhere. And she talks about that fantasy when she was in the UK and she went to uh, an area called the Lakes where a lot of the local poets in the, I think it was the 18th century, uh, would, would escape and live there together to escape the pressures of, of being a celebrity, even back then. And she, she talked about how that was appealing to her. So, I mean, obviously the pressures that she has on a daily basis are quite extreme and as of being a celebrity. And, and she talked about the, the one song, Peace, what I want to talk about later, which I want to talk about later, that was a lot to do with the pressures that she has and anyone who comes into her life is going to be faced with part of that she can't control. Like the paparazzi, that sort of stuff, are going to follow her. And if you're with her, if you're walking beside her, going into or out of a restaurant or shopping with a, with a girlfriend, female friend, whatever it is, the paparazzi are going to be there and she can't protect people from that. And so I'm sure the pressures of being famous, people, we all think, those of us who aren't famous, all think that it would be a wonderful thing, but there is a tremendous burden to always having uh, the paparazzi or people asking to talk to you or get an autograph, whatever it would be. There is a huge burden that I, and I don't think until you're in it, which I have no idea, you, we really can't understand. Taylor also watched The Last Dance, which was a story about Michael Jordan, which was as a huge NBA fan, grudging respect for Michael Jordan. Uh, and I saw him play at the peak. I saw him in the finals the, in the second, uh, whatever, 91, when they won their second, he won a second championship. And he set a record for the most threes and a half. Anyway, uh, but I, I'm not a, I have not been a fan because I've been supporting teams that he would beat in the past but I respect him as one of the greatest, if not the greatest basketball player of all time. I don't want to get in that argument. But anyway, she also watched The Last Dance and that's what inspired her song Epiphany. And she wanted it to be about a variety of, of things, about her grandfather in World War II and also about first responders today. Like the rest of it, she's a fan. Everyone is a fan at some level. Taylor really did send a baby gift to an ex in the line, cold was the steel of my ax to grind of the boys that broke my heart. Now I send them baby presents. And she said she had just sent a baby present when she wrote that song. So that's really, really kind of amusing, funny, interesting, but that's definitely autobiographical. The first song she wrote was Mike Tears Ricochet, which I've talked about before when I reviewed Folklore. It's my favorite song on the album. It makes me cry when I hear it. It is so deep, it's so emotional, it's so intense. Uh, I love that song because of the emotion. I love songs that are emotional. And she wrote that, that was the first song that she wrote in that project. She wrote it herself and she knew it would be cut number five, which as you know, as a Taylor fan, cut number five is on all her albums is the most emotional and intense uh, song on the album. And so she knew from the very beginning that it would be cut number five for this album. She wrote Mirror Ball right after she found out all her shows were canceled. Taylor's approach to making a song is all over the place. Jack Antonoff talks about how it's kind of frenetic 
and there's you know she's constantly coming up well this is a bridge but here's a better bridge and she wrote she writes bridges while she's in the vocal booth singing the previous bridge bridge that they wrote and then i just came up with a better one and really that's just creative you know as things come you just flow and, and i think that's indicative of how creative she is and most creative people i think uh, they just receive it and it flows through them and that taylor is definitely definitely that person what did some of the reviewers think about it new york times dubbed the film a musical experience that heightens the album's sense of pristine contemplation using a small scale casual looking production yeah small scale they didn't even have camera camera crew uh, i newspapers define the film as artfully crafted aesthetically gorgeous cozy cottage core escapism cottage core is that really a word diverse conversations such as light-hearted giggly discussions around the campfire to formal introspection on stiff chairs she also says sarah carson also says that she saw taylor at peace with her life laughing and quote publicly relaxed for the first time in a decade that's good that's very good decider critic found it refreshing to see and hear taylor in the dress down setting long pond studio sessions calling the film a balm for the soul as we wind down an extremely not cool year another quote great pop stars embody our times great songwriters address them taylor swift is doing both he admired swift's rapport with antonoff their laugh out loud jokes and the discussions that yielded interesting insights and factoids uh, drew taylor of collider called the film a winning examination and celebration of folklore and a look at one of the world's biggest pop stars at her most vulnerable and artistically ambitious he picked antonoff as the more active personality while Desner is terse. I didn't truly care for that comment because to be honest, I really identified with Aaron Desner because he's a, a producer and he works in a studio and I, I work in a similar situation, but definitely not at that level. I'm at a, a much lower level, but I have my own studio. I play all my own instruments. I mean, he plays piano, he plays bass, he plays uh, plays guitar on, on the tracks. And he definitely was not that talkative, but I understand that because a lot of times in situations, I will allow other people to talk more than I do. And to call him terse, I thought was unfair because I'm, I'm already jumping to his defense because I'm a fan. Jack and Taylor have been working together since 2013. So I think the terse comment was unfair. I'm gonna defend Aaron Desner. But one part that was extremely, he got very vulnerable when he started talking about peace which is actually my favorite song on the Folklore Long Pond Sessions album, documentary, both, is Peace. And he talks about, because Taylor talks about how she knows that whoever's in her life, she can't guarantee them peace because she can't control the paparazzi, the things that come with being the biggest pop star in the world. She didn't say that, but generally that's what it is. She can't control that. And if you're her friend, she's she can only protect you so much and you're gonna have to put up with some of that. And that was what she meant by the song. But Aaron said that his interpretation of the song was that he struggles with depression and that sometimes he feels it's hard to be married to him. His wife, he has a wife, he has kids because he has ups and downs. And he said he's probably not the ideal. I'm sure he's a fine husband, but he, he worries that he can't give her peace when he's going through those ups and downs. So that was a very vulnerable thing for him to admit. and. I know what that's like because I struggle with that as well. And I know a lot of creatives do. It kind of comes with the creativity sometimes. It doesn't mean that because you have that, you're a better artist. But for some reason, it seems to come along with creativity. It has through the, through the ages. A lot of people have wrestled with, with mental, mental challenges uh, that comes with the creativity. So that was one of the reasons that, uh, that Aaron won me over. And I also love that song because the instrumentation, it's got a, I would almost call it a click track when they did on the Long Pond Sessions. It's, dit, 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 dit. it's some sort of repetitive uh, rhythmic uh, a track that they play it to. And he's playing that part on a bass, which I, I didn't realize when I listened to it, but he's playing it really high on the neck. And that was really innovative to me. And I'm like, man, I want to try to write some songs like that and he's playing multiple notes, he's playing chords or, or dyads, and uh, which, which is done on bass, not as common, uh, but it was just a phenomenal sound. And also they talked about when he sent that to Taylor and Taylor came back with the words that the, the melody and the, the, word, the lyrics over the top, 
that was when he, he had an aha moment because he felt it was kind of a difficult, or maybe not difficult, but unique, unconventional chord progression. And the fact that she tracked immediately right on top of it really made him realize that, hey, we can take this a long way. As he said, that was really an eye opener for him. And I love the message of the song. So I love the instrumentation. I love the message of the song. I love the depth of it. That's my favorite song on the Long Pond Sessions. On the Folklore album, I still, My Tears Ricochet. And the Long Pond Sessions, My Tears Ricochet were, was awesome as well. So anyway, that's my reaction and review of the documentary, the Long Pond Sessions. If you haven't seen it, check it out. You can get on a free trial subscription on Disney Plus if you, if you, if you don't have it. I think you can get it for 15 days. You just have to remember to cancel it if you just want to watch it. I mean, I decry the fact that here in 2021, you know, I've been wanting to watch the last season of Better Call Saul. I haven't seen it yet, and it's been out for like a year because it's not on any of the apps that I've subscribed to. And uh, I'm loath to just buy all these apps. I just don't want to have to spend all that money. But there's some other things I want to see on uh, Disney Plus, so hopefully I'll take make use of it. But I might cancel it, who knows? But that's not really what this video is about. But I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, to check it out. It was it was actually even better than I thought. I don't know what I expected. Oh, Bon Iver, uh, Justin Vernon. He was on it as well, although he did it remotely from Wisconsin. And uh, she mentions the story of uh, she'd always, had always admired him. And he and Aaron are like best friends and been working together. They've got this, this project together, Big Room Machine, a band that they're working together. They've got a music festival. They've got a record label together, The People Upside Down that I think I mentioned earlier. She had written the song Exile with her boyfriend. Uh, she sent it and she was actually thinking that maybe that it would be a good fit for Justin Vernon. And she sent it. It was really funny how she, here's the biggest pop star in the world and she's, she's reticent to even ask if he would be on it. And she sent it to Aaron. Would you know anyone who might fit on this? Meanwhile, she's thinking Justin Vernon. And so he made that connection and they worked together and it's a great song. Phenomenal song. It's one of the best songs. I, I mean, they're all great. I mean, I, I, I probably each day I'll pick a different favorite because they're all so phenomenal. But he, he did his appearance remotely from Wisconsin. Just one small note, almost insignificant, but uh, he seemed to be alone in his studio, but he still wore a bandana over his face. Regardless, that didn't detract. It just was an interesting point. That, and it was interesting to see his studio as well, where he was working. So that's all I got. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something, were entertained, got something out of it. Please leave me comments. I respond to every comment. Let me know what other projects you'd like me to, to, to do a review or reaction on. And we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, this is Tim Wolf. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please go to the link down below in the description. There's a Bentley link. Listen to my music at Spotify. I appreciate it very much. It means a lot to an artist if you follow them. If you would be kind enough to like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Finally, be sure to subscribe. And also there are other videos on this screen that you can watch. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.